our most gracious and loving Father in heaven. Yes. With humbleness in our heart, we bow our heads before thee. Yes. Thanking you for all the wonderful things that we receive in our life. Yes. Thanking you, oh dear God, because you're so good to each one of us. Yes. Once again, you have given us this chance to fulfill our duties unto thee. Yes. That is to praise and worship thy most holy name. Amen. We know we are not so good, oh dear Father. Yes. We committed sins before thee. Yes. You didn't punish each and every one of us. Yes. You gave us one more chance again, oh dear Father. Yes. To come in this place for us to praise and worship thy holy name. Amen. Thank you so much for our borrowed life. Yes. Yes. You keep on giving us this life to each one of us. Yes. You keep on giving us a chance, oh dear Father. That's why whatever happens into our life, we are going to continue praising the most holy name. Amen. May you continue to bless the family of this household, yes. the household of thy children, oh dear Father. Yes. You always spare us in any kind of danger, yes. especially those people who want to destroy us. Yes. Please don't forsake us, oh dear God. Yes. Always guide each one of us. Yes. And most of all, oh dear God, always give us the faith that we need. Yes. May you also bless your humble servants who is with us. Yes. You give him the knowledge and wisdom to expand thy holy words yes. so that all of us will be benefited in your teaching, Amen. our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, yes. continue to mediate us to the Father. Yes. And may you see each one of us here loving one another yes. so that we are all be worthy before the sight of our Father in heaven. Amen. Our God, we firmly believe that you heard our pleadings yes. and you will be with us today. And you have forgiven us of all the sins that we have done. Yes. In the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. brothers and sisters once more we are fortunate to be able to gather today to listen to the words of our Lord God in order for us to be assured that as we continue to sojourn in this world we have never and will never rely on our own understanding which pertains to the way we live as true Christians because there is always the guidance of our Lord God through his teachings and his commandments. During the time of the previous executive minister, especially during the time of Brother Ranyo Gimanalo, one of the frequent 
lessons that they teach to the entirety of the church is about the families, households, parents, and children. Why? Because we all know that the basic unit of society is the family. And in order for us to be truly Christians, truly godly in the sight of our Lord God, it always begins at home, in the family. Now, there are so many books, articles, researches, written in the history of man that tackles the, this exact topic. But for us, even though all of this knowledge is beneficial, our foundation in terms of giving glory to our Lord God, in terms of managing the household, will always be based on the Christian teachings based in the Bible. So how do we manage the household? Based on a lesson taught by Brother Ranyu G. Manalo, let us start with the question, how to manage the household in a manner that is pleasing to our Lord God? Please listen to the pronouncement of Apostle Paul here in 1 Timothy book, chapter 5, verse 4. This is what we can read. But if a widow has children or grandchildren, this should learn first of all to put their religion into practice by caring for their own family and so repaying their parents and grandparents for this is pleasing to God. Now, brothers and sisters, the one talking is Apostle Paul. Also administered the church during the time of the apostles. According to him, if there is a widow who has children or grandchildren, they should put first their religion into practice. Meaning, there will always be people who have faith. They claim that they have religion. But the question is, are you putting it into practice? How can we put it into practice? According to Apostle Paul, put their religion into practice by caring for their own family and repaying their parents and grandparents. So at this point, brothers and sisters, we can see that there is a responsibility given by our Lord God to the parents to care for their children, even to their grandchildren. But the question is, let me ask you this. It is, is it just a one-way relationship? No. If our Lord God told his children to care for their own family, their children, their, uh, their children, their grandchildren, it is also the responsibility of the children to repay their parents and even their grandparents. Now, I, I don't think we should even go into details on how a parent sacrifices almost everything in his life for his and her children and even grandchildren. There is a saying that if a mother is bearing a child, one foot is already in what? In the, the grave. grave. In the grave. Why? Because if a woman carries a child in her womb, there is always that 50-50% that she will die carrying that baby or even giving birth to that baby. Sometimes the children don't even realize the pain that a mother goes through just to bear him into this world. Not to mention to care for him, raise him up. So... That is why it is a commandment of our Lord God that we should repay them. There are children here. All of us are children of our parents. And it is our divine duty to care for our parents and even our grandparents, especially during the time when they can no longer care for themselves. Why is it that important to our Lord God that we should care for our parents, even our grandparents. This is, again, the pronouncement of Apostle Paul here in 1 Timothy 5, 8, and this is what we can read. But those who won't care 
or their relatives, especially those in their own household, have denied the true faith, such people are worse than unbelievers. In the sight of our Lord God, if we cannot care for our relatives, our family, in our own household, then we are worse than unbelievers. Now, we can, we can tackle about how the unbelievers will not be saved, the unbelievers who do not know God, who do not know Christ, who are doing sins in this world. But we should understand by not caring for our parents, by not loving our parents, we are worse than them. We are worse than unbelievers. Why? Why is it worse than unbelievers in the sight of our Lord God? Here in Matthew chapter 15, in the verses 4 up to 9. For instance, God's law is honor your father and mother, and one who reviles his parents must die. But you say, even if your parents are in need, you may give their support money to the church instead. And so by your man-made rule, you nullify the direct command of God to honor and care for your parents. You hypocrites. Well, did I, did I say a prophesy of you? These people say they honor me, but their hearts are far away. Their worship is worthless, for they teach their man-made laws instead of those from God. This is the reason why anyone who does not care or love his parents or grandparents is worse than an unbeliever because by doing that, we nullify the direct command of our Lord God. So this is not just a commandment of any man. This is not just a commandment of society. This is a commandment of our Lord God. Now we can, we can debate about it all day long. But remember, this is the commandment of our Lord God. What happens if we nullify it, if we go against it, or we disobey it? According to the verse, their worship is worthless. So any, any form of worship, any act of kindness to other people, to the public, is worthless. Why? Because it is already worthless in the sight of our Lord God. Now, if you heard me right, it says here, anyone who reviles his parents must die. That is how grave the punishment is in the sight of our Lord God. If anyone reviles his parents, why? Because the commandment is to honor your father and your mother. Let's read it in another translation. And this is what we can read. For instance, God says, honor your father and mother and anyone who speaks disrespectfully of the father or mother must be put to death. You know, we might be thinking, what does revile mean? It sounds so extreme. You know, I, I'm not like that. I don't do that. But the Bible says anyone who speaks disrespectfully to the father or mother must die. How can a person be disrespectful to the parents? by answering back but what if you have a point you know you're 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 the son you're the daughter you have a point you know that your parents are wrong in your argument why can't you answer back you can get your point across without being disrespectful if you shout back at your parents is that good no it's disrespectful if you curse your parents, is that good? It's, that's worse. Nobody should do that to any parents. You know, somebody might say, but my, but my father, my mother, they're wrong. I know I'm right. Especially in this kind of society where the children are brought up with their equal rights and they, they have this sense of feeling that you know, they can do anything, especially when they're of age. Remember, we may belong to different societies of this world, but we belong to one society, one culture. What is that? Christian culture. So if we cannot, if we cannot allow ourselves to function as true Christians in the sight of our Lord God, then 
our worship will always be worthless. There are children here today. Let us let this sink in our hearts because this is the commandment of our Lord God. If we have done this in the past, we have disrespected our parents. I think all children have done that. There was one time me and my mom would always have arguments, when I, especially when I was younger. But then I can't remember even one instance that I cursed my parents, my mother, or my father. I had that fear in me. I had that, you know, if you can do that to somebody else, and then you, you do the same to your parents, that's a different thing. So we are not here to, to be bitter about what have happened in the past. The point is, today is a different day. Tomorrow is a different day. If we have done this in the past, and our Lord God is telling us, if you do that, then your worship is worthless. If you do that, then you are a hypocrite. If you do that, then you are no longer a true Christian. Then we should change. That's what being true Christians is all about. Allowing our Lord Christ to change us in a manner that is befitting the sight of our Lord God. Now that is the responsibility of children to their parents. Because truth be told, not all parents are created equal. There are some parents who just really disregard their children. There are some parents now who don't even love their children. But is that, does that give us the right to dishonor them? Does that give the right to any child to curse or revile his parents? No. Our Lord God will not accept it. Now, how do parents manage the families in order to be holy in the sight of our Lord God? Now, let us read what is written here in 31, 27. This is what we can read. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. So how do parents manage their families in the holiness that is befitting our Lord God? She watches over her household. And that is why the parents should be able to know who are the friends of their children, especially the close ones. Because there is a saying, tell me who your friends are, and I'll tell you what? Who you are. You know, that is not specific to everybody because, you know, everyone is different. But the company you keep says a lot about you. It may not say everything about you, but it says a lot about you. So the children should pick their friends wisely. And the, the parents should be able to guide their children. You know, it's, it's not the control issues that parents should have that, no, I don't want you to uh, have that as your friend. Why, mom? Why that? Just because. You, know, you have to be able to explain to them, guide them, so that they will be able to choose their friends wisely. So the parents should watch over. You know, sometimes parents do tend to overdo this. And when you say watch over, it's like watching like a hawk. Who's that? Who are you talking to? Who are you texting? I'll see your Facebook. Who are you messaging? All those things, sometimes when, when parents do that, they tend to what? Strangle their children. And when they do that, the end result is not good. They become rebellious. What else do parents should do here in first timothy 3 4 he must manage his own family well having children who respect and obey him so this is a responsibility for all parents manage your household manage our own family you know parents are sometimes so busy with work right because who 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 will tend to the family who will uh, provide food on the table but sometimes when, when parents think that the only important thing is putting food on the table or having money for the house, 
they neglect the children. So who, take care, who takes care of the children? Who guides them? Television, internet, what else? Friends. In the Philippines, the yaya. So the values that the parents should give to their children is no longer available to them because they don't have time. We know that everybody would be very busy in, in managing everything in their life because they need to take care of their household. But we should always have time for our children. It's not the length of time. What is more important? The quality of time that we spend. Because let's say in a whole 24 hours, there's sleep, there's work, there's uh, doing other things. If we can just spend a few moments during that day, every day, to have a quality time with our children, to talk to them. Let's say if it's, if it's just a few minutes, but it's quality time, then it's something that would be remarkable in their minds and in their hearts. But if that time, no matter how short it is, is about nagging, shouting at each other, bickering, that will not leave a very good impression. What else is the reminder for all parents here in Ephesians chapter 6 and the verses 4? Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. So the parents are also instructed not to provoke the children to anger. Because there is nothing good that will come out of anger. Now, let me ask you, even if you're right in an argument, but if you say it in an angry manner, would it be received well? No. So if there is a heated argument, what is the best thing to do? To stop first, keep calm, because once you open your mouth when you're angry, would it produce good words? No, probably words that's no longer in the vocabulary would come off your mouth when you're angry and it's not good. So the, the parents should not provoke their children to anger and the children should not provoke their parents to anger. Rather bring them up in the discipline and instruction based on the teachings of our Lord God. What else? Colossians 3.21. Fathers, do not aggravate your children or they will become discouraged. What else? The parents should not aggravate. You know, if, if the parents uh, sees that their children are doing something wrong, it is very important that they talk to them regarding the matter of what they are doing wrong but it should not be in, in a nagging manner. Like for example, whenever you open the door and you show your parents and they say, oh, you remember the time when you were four years old? You know what you did? You're a bad boy, you're a bad girl. What, what will happen to them? They will lose their self-confidence, they will lose their self-esteem, they will be discouraged. That's why there are even children who would commit suicide. You know, when they don't receive any positive things, from their parents. That's why it is important that the instruction that we give them will be based from the Bible, based from the teachings of our Lord God. Now in teaching, based on the teachings of our Lord God, how should we teach them? How, how when should we teach them? Please listen here in Deuteronomy chapter six, verse seven and two. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up, that you may fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you, you and your son and your grandson, all the days of your life, and that your days may be prolonged. When should we teach our children? the values of a true Christian, the teachings of our Lord God, 
according to the verse that we have read, you shall teach them diligently to your children. Diligently. What does diligently mean? Yeah, it means that you should be persistent in your teaching with them. You should be consistent in your teaching. When? When you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. Meaning, at every opportune time that you can have time with your children, you should teach them. Now, I remember when, when we were raising Yuri, and she was very small. Sometimes, of course, children would do things like scatter things or lump the milk. And when you're tired for the whole day cleaning up and then suddenly, yeah, she's just a baby. So that means she won't understand. Now that she has grown up, when, when children do something wrong, it is important to reprimand them at the opportune time, not after one week. Because they will not understand why is my mother, why is my dad scolding me about something that I can't remember. When they do something wrong at that time, reprimand them, discipline them, explain to them what is, uh, what is wrong. So at every opportune time. Now remember, when we say opportune time, this is the right time. Not like, for example, the children have a test tomorrow. They've reviewed all day and they're about to sleep. 30 minutes after they have fallen asleep, then the, the mother will say, Anak, anak, isin ka. And they say, oh, why? What was wrong? Oh, you remember the time when you did this? Oh, you know, that's wrong. Come on, sit up, and I will read you the Bible. You know, that's wrong, because according to... Is that, is that the right time? No. They will not even remember it, and it will only irritate them. So it will not produce anything good. So at every opportune time, we should be able to teach them. And what is the promise? According to the Bible, your son, your grandson, and all the days of your life will be prolonged. When should the parents begin teaching and disciplining their children? Proverbs 22.6 Teach a child to choose the right path, and when he is older, he will remain upon it. When? When he's just a child. Not when he's about to get married. Not when he has already grandchildren of his own. When he is a child. Raise him up to choose the right path. When they are children, of course, they cannot decide for themselves. But that's why we're guiding them. We're training them to make good decisions. And sometimes it is important to also allow them to make bad decisions. Because in bad decisions, what? You learn from those bad decisions. So it's important to learn from everything that we experience in life. There is a saying that parents always say to their children when they're doing something. And that is, Anak, papunta ka palang. Pabalik na ako. So, what does that mean in English? Uh, you're, you're just going and I'm, about, I'm returning. It just means that you're doing something. You're thinking that you're doing the right thing. But we are older. We are your parents. We have done that already. We've gone through what you're going through. And we know what's happening at work or what will happen. I remember that, that line because my dad told me that. He said, anak, papunta ka palang. Pabalik na ako. And I answered back, but hindi tayo nakasalubong. <laughs> I remember that because after that, pinalo ko. Sabi, <laughs> nasagot ka pa. <laughs> you know, and they would always say, you will understand when you have children of your own. And that is true. That is true. And sometimes it's just, you know, it, it makes us smile thinking about it. But when the time comes, we, all of us will realize our parents were right. Our parents were right. So that's why we should teach a child to choose the right path. But in choosing the right path, in teaching them, in training them, what should be our guiding principle? Also here in Proverbs 23, 13. Don't fail to correct your children. Discipline won't hurt them. They won't die if you use a stick on them. Punishment will keep them out of hell. Especially in a culture like this when 
children are scolded and they're spanked. They would call 911. They would call the social worker and they would be taken away. That's why it is important to understand that we should not fail to correct our children when, when they are wrong. Discipline won't hurt them. So there should be discipline within the household. It starts very young as they grow old. You know, th those discipline will be inculcated in their hearts and in their minds. They will live by it. And if they go beyond that, the Bible says they won't die if you use a stick on them. That's the pamalo, you know, <laughs> who among here experience being spanked using a stick. <laughs> okay. Just a reminder, brothers and sisters, because I remember when I was teaching this back in the Philippines, I was teaching in Tagalog. And after the worship service, um, a child went to me and told me, well, basically he told me that his parents is uh, using a stick on him. So I think he, it affected him so much. And I'm just saying that, you know, it's, it's in the Bible. We should be disciplined and if, if needed, uh, they may hit us with a stick just as a reminder. Because the Bible says you won't die if you stick a, a stick on them. And then I called the parent because um, I know him. And then I, I told him what his child told me. And then he said, well, I, I follow what's in the Bible. Why? How, how can you say that you follow what's in the Bible? He's still alive. Because the Bible says he won't die if I use a stick. Because it's in Tagalog. It says, um, something like that. So if he's still alive, then I'm doing something right. Let's not use it to that extent, you know. Um, a stick, as a reminder, it's, it's something as a reprimand so that they will, they will remember. Now, brothers and sisters, it is important when we are doing discipline, first of all, let us not be pushed into anger. Because when you're pushed into anger and you suddenly find a stick and you use that stick, you're hitting that child with a stick out of anger. And sometimes, because I remember my mom well, he, she um, used this very, very often. When she's angry, anything she can pick up along the way going to me, she would pick up. If it's a broom, if it's a vacuum cleaner, if it's a sofa, she would pick it up and hit me with a sofa. <laughs> and because, because my mom, as a, as a temper. Yeah. So look what happened to me. <laughs> but then again, you know, discipline would never hurt anybody if it is done correctly, if it is done the right way. And the discipline that the parents are conducting towards their children are all brought up because of one thing. What is that? Listen here in Proverbs 13, 24. If you don't punish your children, you don't love them. Let me repeat it. If you don't punish your children, you don't love them. Why? Let me continue. If you do love them, you will correct them. It is a way of correcting the children. Punishment. Now, if there is punishment, there, is also, there should always be a reward. There is a reward and punishment system that you, you should employ so that when they're doing right, you should also commend them. It's not, you know, giving them attention only when they're doing something wrong. In psychology, in child psychology, it is, um, it is noted that children tend to rebel or do things, even if it's bad, because sometimes, or most often, it is a way to catch the parents' attention. You know, my, my mom, my dad, they don't, they don't give attention to me. I have good grades. I, I've done, I, I, I did the, wish, uh, the, the dishes. I washed the clothes. I didn't hear anything from them. I, but then when I broke the vase, all eyes were on me. 
So it's bad. It's, it's like negative publicity, but it is still publicity. It is their way of catching our attention. So let us not just give them attention when they are doing wrong, but let's give them attention when they're doing right. So if we do love them, let us discipline them, give them instructions. And, you know, it is important when you reprimand your children, you should explain to them why you are punishing them, why you are reprimanding them. Not, why, 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 why did you, why did you scold me? Why did you spank me? Just because. It's not that. In the family, in our family, my mom would always be the one scolding me or punishing me. But when my dad calls me and tells me, anak, mag tayo. Oh my gosh, I'm in big trouble. That's when I know I'm in big trouble. Because when my dad calls me, he would tell me to enter the room, close the door behind me, sit on the bed with him, and then he will open the Bible. And he, it's not that, it's not just that. He would tell me, do you know what you did wrong? So I have to explain to him what I did wrong. And then he would read verses in the Bible. And then he would say, now do you understand? I would say, yes. Okay, tell me what you understood from the verse. And I, have to, I have to explain to him what I did wrong, what the Bible was saying I did wrong. And then the next part would be, of course, I would be crying already. He'd say, okay, son, you pray. And I'll be the one praying. So I would pray. <laughs> Imagine praying with, with tears and, you know. But then I learned. I, I, learned that, I learned that when I do something wrong, it's not just them scolding me because I did something wrong. It's them explaining to me why it is wrong. So that the next time that I would do it, then I would remember, oh, it was already explained to me why this is wrong. But still, I would do it. That's how kids are. But then you learn as you grow older. So the good thing is you learn. You should learn. But if you don't learn, that's a different, ma that's a different matter altogether. So remember, if we love our children, we should correct them. We should discipline them. Now, what should be the stand and conviction of each household to be worthy before our Lord God? Please listen here in Joshua 24, 15. But if you are unwilling to obey the Lord, then decide today whom you will obey. Will it be the gods of your ancestors beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites here in this land? But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. What is the most important for each household? that each household should stand firm in their resolve in serving our Lord God. Why is this lesson no longer taught inside the Church of Christ under EBM? Because, yes, they are now dividing the families. They should be one with EVM instead of one with our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. But for us, and we have done this, for us and our whole family, we will serve our Lord God. What is the promise of our Lord God if we are to obey this? Genesis eighteen nineteen, And I have picked him out to have godly descendants and a godly household, men who are just and good, so that I can do for him all I have promised. Our Lord God has promised us everything that we need in life. Protection from harm and evil good life, good health, good family. But when will our Lord God fulfill all that he has promised when we have a godly descendants and godly household? That is why, brothers and sisters, we should remember that in our household, it should be God and Christ-centered. So again, we would like to appeal to everyone especially those who are listening to this lesson today. It is important not only for the parents to love and care for their children, but it is a divine duty for the children 
to care and love their parents, especially during the time when they are already old. When will you tell them you love them? When will you care for them? When they are already in the hospital? When the doctor is telling you to have your parents' affairs in order? When will you think of the things that we have done in the past that have hurt our parents? When will we apologize to them? When will we give love to them, repay them for all the sacrifices that they have done? There is nothing in this world, brothers and sisters, that we can do to justify disrespecting our parents. Nothing. It is not I who is saying this. It is not the society saying it is our Lord God who will not accept any form of worship from anyone who reviles his parents, who dishonor his parents. That is why our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ appeal to each and every one of us because we are all children of our parents. When we see them, they're already tired for doing everything in the house, for working, for managing the household. Isn't it but appropriate and right for, for us as children to spend time with them, to hold their hand, to embrace them, to kiss them, to tell them how much we love them. We are, most of us are already grown up. We have our own decisions, we have our own life. We should not, for one instance, think that we are better than our parents. We are not better than our parents. They have done so much for us. Sometimes when they are already tired and weary from life itself, raising us up, and then when we grow up, we just disrespect them, we just shout at them, we curse them. Our Lord God loves us. That's why He is reprimanding us if we have done that. We are doing this because we love each other. We remind each other. If you are led to disrespecting our parents, stop. Turn back. Don't go that path because God will punish us and our descendants to come. But if we love our parents, if we care for them, if we embrace them with all our hearts, then God will bless us and our household and our family. Let this be a lesson to each and every one of us, not when it is already too late, when our parents are already in the grave. And even if we try to talk to them, even if we try to tell them how much we love them, and how much we're sorry for the things that we have done, will they be able to hear that? No more. Now that they are still alive. Sometimes when I talk to my mom, and I don't know if she understands me. Sometimes when, when, when I'm already tired from tending to her and caring for her, sometimes I also get a temper but then before I open my mouth, before I am led to anger, I remember. I remember when I was a child and I couldn't walk. I remember when I was a child when I couldn't speak. I remember when I was a child and they have to do everything for me. They were so patient. They did everything out of love. Now that they're old, now that they, cannot, they can no longer care for themselves, what kind of a child would I be if I did not take care of them? If I did not spend each day telling them how much I love them? We are all children of our parents. Do not waste time being angry at them for everything in this life. Do not waste a single minute not telling them how much we love them and appreciate everything that we have done for them. Not when it is already too late now that we have time now that they are here with us they may be far away a phone call away would mean a lot to a parent 
a simple gesture of love and care would mean the world to a parent. Let us not neglect our divine duty to love and honor our parents. Let us all rise and we shall pray. Our loving Father in heaven, thank you so much for once again we have heard your teaching. Once again we have been reminded of the teachings that you have for the parents and for the children. Father in heaven, we know that we have never been worthy before your sight. And we know, Father, that we have committed many sins before you. But as children of yours, Father, we approach you with humble hearts. We beg of you, Father, not to look at our mistakes, not to look at our human errors. But, Father, please reach out to us and embrace us. Allow us to be forgiven of our sins so that we may continue to give praises and worship to your holy name. Father in heaven, there are parents here today. Many of them carry the burden of their family. Many of them are so disheartened with the many things that's happening in this world. They worry so much about their household. They worry about the things, especially for their children. And when it is so burdensome for the parents, but when they would almost raise their hands and give up, may you please hearken to their prayers. Please, Father, reach out to each and every one of your children. Allow us to receive the strength coming from you. When we are ready, weak and tired, when we can no longer make another step forward. Father, please carry us. Carry us all so that we may reach the end of this journey and receive the blessings coming from you. Father in heaven, here before you are the children. May you please bless them with the life that they need. Give them a good future, Father. Please endow in each children here the love and care for our parents. Please, Father, allow the children to grow up fearing you. Allow each of your children to be worthy before your sight. And when the time comes that our parents should pass and the children are already left alone, may your teachings, Father, that our parents have inculcated in our hearts be the ones to remain with us and allow us to be guided as we sojourn in this world we will always be thankful to them because you have used them as your instrument to allow us to live a christian life and be worthy before your sight our lord jesus christ we approach you and ask of you, please always intercede our prayers to the Father. When we pray for our parents, when we pray for our grandparents, Father, allow us to be able to be interceded to the Father. Lord Jesus, please allow us to receive the blessings that we need, most especially the forgiveness of our sins. Our Lord God in heaven, may you continue to hold on tightly to each household that you see before you. Many of your children have been divided because of the crisis inside the church. But we have made a firm stand, Father. We have made that stand to be on the side of your righteousness. And because of this, Father, we are confident that you will never forsake us. Allow us and our household to be saved come judgment day. Our Father in heaven, may you please bless each and every one of your children all over the world. Many of them are conflicted. Many of them are persecuted and oppressed. Father in heaven, you alone can save us. You alone can protect us from all evil and harm. Please allow us to be able to be joined once more at your perfect timing, Father. 
so that all of us will give praises and worship to your holy name. Amen. For all of these things we ask and beg in the name of our Lord Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.